How's it going everyone? So this evening I'm going to be installing a new onboard air compressor by Extreme Outback into my power wagon. Now if you follow my channel you know that a couple years ago I installed an Air Zenith OB2 compressor in the fender of the truck to help with airing tires up uh, as well as handling inner tubes and floaties down at the lake. However, after I installed the Air Zenith OB2 compressor, I noticed a major flaw with the compressor itself, its actual output. The OB2 compressor is rated at 100% duty cycle and 4.25 CFM at 0 PSI and 2.4 CFM at 100 PSI. But after airing up my tires and my two gallon tank that I've got on the truck, I think that those numbers are inaccurate or I hate to say it, but inflated. Now airing up one of my 37 inch tires was taking about four to five minutes, which means I'm looking at about 20 minutes or over, uh, you know, to inflate all of the tires on the, my truck. Now that's a pretty long time to be sitting there and idling, especially when I've got cranky kids in the back seat that just want to hit the road and, and get home. And so after that trip, I knew I needed to step up to a bigger unit and I started looking around. Now my search for the best onboard air compressor led me to two frequently suggested compressors. One was the ARB Twin and the other one was the Smittybilt 5.65 CFM compressor. However, I found a couple issues with these compressors. The first one is that the ARB Twin has questionable reliability and I saw a lot of users complaining about the unit overheating, especially with under hood setups. And the Smitty built unit is not 100% duty cycle. Now, a lot of people of course claim that they are able to air up all of their tires without it overheating. However, I know that's adding excess wear and tear to the compressor. Plus it's still not as fast as the ARB unit. Now there was one other brand that I saw pop up and that was Extreme Outback. Now Extreme Outback does have a couple compressors that are perfect for overlanding. However, there's one unit in particular that really caught my eye. That unit was the Extreme Outback Extreme Air Magnum. Now after seeing the reported CFM numbers, the power draw and the size of the unit, I knew I had to have it. Now the Magnum air compressor features 6 CFM at 0 PSI, 2.6 CFM at 100 PSI, and 100% duty cycle, and this compressor is huge. Although having a mini compressor would make mounting easy, if you want the best performance and the fastest fill rate from your air compressor, there's no way around the size and power draw required to do so. Now I will be finishing up this install video with a comparison between the OP2 compressor and the Extreme Outback compressor. Now one thing I do want to point out here is that the Air Zenith OB2 compressor is a three-quarter horsepower rated motor, while the Extreme Outback Magnum motor is 1.5 horsepower. Now motor size is actually a big part of the reason that I think the Air Zenith specs are wrong. Um, the Magnum motor here is twice as big as the Air Zenith, and yet they both have similar output numbers. Now in order to hit a certain CFM, you have to have a certain size motor, and I just don't think that the Air Zenith is actually putting out the numbers that it claims. Now one other thing that could be brought up is that the Air Zenith compressor is starting to wear out. However, I don't actually think that's true because one, I don't have that many hours on the unit, and two, I still feel like it fills up my little uh, tank in the back of the truck at about the same rate. Of course, I haven't timed it, uh, but I don't feel like it takes all that long. Now to get started with installation, you're going to need the following items. The first is the Extreme Air Magnum Compressor or one of the other similar units that Extreme Outback offers. You'll also need a heat dissipative hose. Now what this does is it helps cool down the air from the compressor before it hits either your air tank or any air connection that you might have. The air temperature coming out of the compressor head is going to be pretty darn hot. So if you use a regular hose connection or something like that, you can end up actually melting the hose and having a leak. The next thing that you need is a check valve. Now this will prevent air from going back into the air compressor and leaking out. A circuit breaker, relay, a pressure switch. Now this can be adjustable. Typically it's between like 90 and 150 PSI. The switch that I have in my truck is 145 PSI, so it's gonna work perfect for this system. Now the Extreme Air Magnum compressor has a 150 PSI maximum output, and so you need to make sure that your switch is 150 PSI or less. You're also going to need a toggle switch, uh, which could be S-Pod or a little simple flip switch, whatever, but this is just going to be a simple on off for your compressor. You're also going to need a 10 amp inline fuse, wiring for the compressor, which is typically four, six, or eight gauge, as well as nuts, bolts, and air lines. Now the last thing that you're going to need, and it is optional, is a blow off valve. Now I didn't realize that they made blow off valves for air compressors, but after reading about it, it makes a lot of sense and I did pick one up. Now after your compressor shuts off, you have built up pressure inside the cylinder head. And so the next time that you turn your compressor back on, the motor needs to overcome that pressure in order to start putting more air into your system. 
However, having that excess pressure in the cylinder head makes it very difficult for the motor to turn over. And although it can do it, it is very taxing on your electrical system. What the blow off valve does is it vents that excess pressure. So now when the compressor turns back on, it doesn't need to overcome that existing pressure inside the cylinder head. Now the blow off valve will help reduce wear and tear on your unit, as well as help reduce some of the electrical current required in order to turn your compressor back on. Now, in my opinion, the benefits of the blow-off valve for your air compressor far outweigh the small cost of the actual little blow-off valve itself. And so if you're installing a new system, I highly recommend you put that in. Now, Extreme Outback does offer every single part that I did list off here. And so if you have any questions about this setup or you want to customize something, give them a call or send them an email and they'll be happy to help out. Since I already have an air compressor installed in my system and I was using high quality parts before, I'll be able to use some of my existing components with my new compressor. So now that I've thrown a bunch of information at you, I want to go over basic installation here. Now, Extreme Outback does have this nice little diagram here that explains how everything should be hooked up. And of course, depending on your application, you might have to move things in different locations or you'll be using different switches. But overall, this is really what you're going to be looking at for installation. Now, starting off, this compressor does use a massive amount of power, so you need to be hooked up directly to your battery. Now, if you are running a dual battery system, you're going to want to make sure that this is hooked up to your starter battery, and you don't want to have really long cables if you can avoid it. So starting off with the compressor, you're going to have the ground wire hooked up directly to the battery. Next up is going to be your positive cable, which hooks up to your relay. And in between your starter battery and your relay is going to be positive cables. And the circuit breaker will basically act as a big fuse for you in case there is some sort of problem. Now the next portion of this is going to be your ignition switch. Now this doesn't have to be an ignition switch. It could be um, you know, something that always has power. However, it's a good idea to have it on some sort of accessory that turns on when the vehicle is on and running. So that way you're not running your compressor when you're not running your truck, because it's really important that you're running your truck and your engine when you are running this compressor. Now in between your power source and your toggle switch is going to be a little 10 amp fuse. And then that toggle switch is going to hook up to the pressure switch, which is then hooked up to the relay. Now, when you turn your truck on and everything is running, you can flip your toggle switch to the on position and that will send power to the pressure switch. Now, if the pressure switch sees that there is less than, in my case, 110 PSI, then it will continue sending power over to the relay. The relay will then energize and turn on, which will hook up the power from the battery to your compressor and the compressor will turn on and run. Now, one thing that is not shown here in the diagram is the blow off valve, which is going to be screwed in directly to the compressor head itself. And it also hooks onto the relay. Now, the reason you want to do this is so that way when your compressor turns on, your blow off valve will be energized and it will close basically so it will not leak. And then when power is cut off to the compressor, the blow off valve will open and vent that excess pressure in the cylinder head. Now this won't be a direct how-to for installation, but I am going to go over the major parts and when I show some of the wiring and everything, you'll see where I have each of these parts installed. The compressor is now installed here and it seems pretty solid, so I shouldn't have any problems with that moving. Uh, the next thing I'm going to be doing is installing the high amperage relay right here. Now I'll probably have it somewhere on my board and obviously I will have that mounted down and then that will be hooked up to my circuit breaker right here. All right, and I think electrically I have everything hooked up that I need to. The last thing really is just hooking up my airline into my control unit here. So basically I have my little switch here. When I flip that on, then power will go over to our pressure switch and that's the cutoff basically. So if it sees that the air tank is 140 PSI or less, then it will tell the compressor to turn on. So then the wire signal will go from the pressure switch over here i've got it hidden under here and then my wire for this triggers the relay here to turn on and then that tells the compressor to turn on of course once we get up to the required pressure then the signal at the pressure switch will shut off which will then tell the relay to turn off and then the compressor will stop so to finish up this install i need to hook up my air hose and so i'm going to snake that probably behind it maybe I don't know um, I'll try a couple different things but the air hose should be the last thing I need all right so I got my heat dissipative hose hooked up and it kind of snakes back along the firewall and hooks up over here now I would like to eventually have everything just kind of be a hard line but right now I do have it going to a 3 8 inch air hose uh, on the very end here as you can see now I haven't hooked that up of course into my system I'm going to test to make sure that it works first before plugging it in um, but it is pretty late right now so I'm gonna have to test that in the morning but at least we are ready to go 
All right, so our Extreme Outback Extreme Air Magnum air compressor is now installed. I'm gonna do a real simple test here, and that is basically filling up my little air tank from zero to 150 PSI, which is what my cutoff switch is. Now I'll be comparing, of course, the OB2 compressor, which is inside the fender, as well as the Extreme Air Magnum. Now later on, I will be doing a comparison between filling up one tire and all four uh, for the Air Zenith, as well as the new Outback Extreme air compressor. However, for this time, I wanna keep it real simple and just do a, uh, a the small air tank test. So we have our Extreme Air Magnum compressor installed on top of the engine, of course, and then I have my OB2 compressor installed behind the fender here, so I can't show you that. And I've got my air down valve open here, so we now know that there is zero pressure inside of the tank. Now, normally the way I have it set up, I have a switch here and I also have a switch over here. So what that would do basically is this switch turns on that compressor, the extreme air. And then if for some reason I want to run the other one, I have the switch here. So that way I could run one or both compressors if I want. Now, the way that I have it wired up is I cannot use only the Air Zenith by itself. So I have to disconnect the Extreme Air, which I have already done. So the truck is running, of course, to make sure we're getting optimal voltage to our compressor. Um, I'll go ahead and flip this switch on. And as soon as I flip this switch, then our OB2 compressor will turn on and we'll start our timer. All right, so there we have it. Uh, I stopped at 313, but it was probably, you know, 311 or 312. All right, so our time came in for the OB2 compressor at, like I said, about 311 to 312. Um, it's a pretty long time. It's only a two gallon tank. And every time I had it on, I always felt like it should have been filling faster, um, but it's always done this basically since new. Um, and again, that's kind of a long time for a little two gallon tank. So now let's switch over to the extreme air compressor. Now this one should be about twice as fast, uh, but of course the numbers are not gonna lie. So let's get that started. All right, so now I have my power wire hooked up for our relay for the Extreme Outback air compressor. Um, obviously, once I flip this switch, then we'll get power. And over on the other side, we can see here that this switch is in the off position, so I will only be using this compressor. So there we go. Again, we've got our valve open here, and there's no air coming out of this. Our gauge reads at zero, and we're ready to start the test. And one other thing about the Extreme Outback air compressor is the sound from it is a lot different than the OB2. Uh, the OB2 always feels like it's kind of at like the verge of breaking or being destroyed. Um, but the Extreme Outback compressor sounds, like I said, just sounds different. It doesn't sound nearly as stressed. <laughs> wow. Now, as you saw on the timer there, the Extreme Outback uh, compressor filled our tank in a minute and 26 or a minute and 27, which is really, really fast. Now, that's um, a little bit more than twice as fast as the OB2 compressor. And so that's really gonna be nice next time we're out camping and we're trying to fill up inner tubes because before with the OB2, you could just tell it was struggling. Um, if we filled up the tank beforehand and started filling up the inner tubes, it did okay. Um, but once the air tank was depleted, then it, it was just struggling. The air coming out of it was really hot and uh, you know it just wasn't that fast of a flow. Now that gets me really excited for our air up test, which is going to be inflating a 137 inch tire from you know trail PSI up to normal street driving, and then also all four tires. So that way we can expose any weaknesses because I have a feeling once the compressors heat up, of course the inflation times are going to go up a little bit, but I wanna see by how much. And of course, if you have any questions about the installation itself or the compressor, go ahead and put those down in the comments below. Or if you need to reach out to Outback, I'll have their email and their website listed below too. Now, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. We're going to have a couple more comparisons with this compressor coming out as well as a long-term review. And we'll see you in the next video.